Hi there, my name's Andy Tunstall and I'm one of the directors at Reading Hydro. Uh, what I'd like to do today is give you a little bit of an update on where the project is. The uh, AGM went to the end of September 2019 but obviously an awful lot has happened since then. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of massive detail about the project's history but just as a reminder, um, Reading Hydro is a community benefit society and with a single aim to build a hydroelectric power plant at Cavisham Weir. We're run by a board of six directors and approximately six uh, advisors. Uh, and six years ago, one of the uh, current directors, uh, Dr. Tony Cowling, you can see him in the middle there with the uh, orange jumper on, um, had was looking at the water flows going over the weir at uh, Cavisham. Uh, I thought what a great site this would be for a hydroelectric scheme uh, right in the centre of a town so there'd be plenty of customers there to use the electricity but also that it could be done in a place which is uh, part of a footpath so people could actually see uh, renewable energy being uh, produced right in front of them by simply looking at uh, uh, the uh, Archimedes screws turning round. Uh, so from an educational point of view it would be a great idea to have it there as well. So from that concept stage, uh, starting in about 2014, uh, a lot of the uh, first few years were about uh, you know, discussing with various bodies about how this could be done, including the Environment Agency and Reading Borough Council. It started under the Reading Sustainability Centre uh, in terms of gaining those uh, permissions. Uh, and in late 2018, there were a pioneer, pioneer Share offer was launched. Uh, which uh, enabled a, a small budget to be uh, created which would give us access to specialist assessments, final permissions and production of a business plan which we could then offer as a share offer. The share offer was uh, offered uh, in late 2019 uh, and uh, we'll be talking about how well that uh, uh, went in a moment uh, with the idea that if all of the money was raised the project would be built uh, late 2020 in sort of like uh, beginning of autumn 2020. Just to explain exactly where it is, as you can see from the map there, uh, if you go north over Cavisham Weir towards View Island, you will see that there's a uh, short abutment from the end of the weir to View Island and the uh, turbines will be uh, located there, effectively underneath the uh, current footpath. And that red line indicates the fish pass, which would go from the downstream end of the river past the weir and the turbines to the upstream. Uh, this is one of the things that we had to do uh, for the um, uh, Environment Agency uh, permissions. There is a fish pass there already but we've heard it described as only suitable for the most athletic fish because it's quite short and quite steep. Uh, our um, one will be a lot more uh, natural meandering, it won't be the simple arc that's been done there and it will also be because it goes for a longer uh, period it'll be um, uh, less steep so it'll enable more fish to actually uh, use that fish pass to move upstream. So what we've got permission from uh, the EA is to use a certain amount of the river flow and permission to connect a uh, 46 kilowatt uh, power plant uh, to the grid uh, on Lock Island with the local um, uh, uh, network operator which is uh, SSE. So our business plan took account of the revenue from uh, our direct consumer, uh, Thames Lido, who have agreed in principle to buy the uh, majority of the output. The balance of the output will be sold to the grid on a wholesale basis. And as we uh, just about made the qualifying period for the feed-in tariff, we will also get that uh, contribution uh, as a subsidy from the government for all of the output. So the main ongoing expense items uh, are operating costs, uh, interest and capital repayments to the shareholders. Uh, and what's left after that is the community benefit, which would normally be the profit in a private company. But as we are a community benefit society, uh, that uh, surplus is how it is expressed there. But of course, uh, first of all, you have to build it. And we produced an initial budget of £700,000, as you can see on the slide here, built up of uh, the following items. Um, it's probably worth explaining how we got uh, a couple of these figures because they are at the end of the day the two biggest ones. 
On the turbines and generation uh, equipment, we've had actual quotes for uh, these. Um, on the civil works, the construction costs, uh, so this includes things like the concrete housing for the turb turbines and also the temporary works like the footbridge and access for all of the equipment. So our consultants' estimates were based on their substantial experience in designing low-head hydro installations in the UK and one specific project nearby that was deemed similar. We didn't have the time or the budget from the Pioneer Share Offer to commission them to make more detailed designs and get more accurate quotes and we'll be discussing this issue further on. So it was opinion of the board that a realistic budget uh, had been set uh, and we note that another similar uh, power capacity scheme at Congleton in Cheshire had got a very similar price tag of some 730000 We also set ourselves a minimum target of 426000 which is about 60% of the total. Uh, if the concept behind that was that if only that amount uh, had been reached then we could probably uh, borrow the rest of the budget that we required from uh, banks uh, although that would uh, probably incur higher interest rate charges and have a shorter payback requirement. So the graph on the right shows a, a linear um, uh, achievement of that 700,000 target from the launch on the 30th of December right the way through to Valentine's Day on the 14th of December. Um, we probably expected that we would get more at the beginning, a lull in the middle and then more just before it closed, um, but in fact that isn't what happened. So if we look at uh, what happened there, we, we had a pre-registration phase uh, two weeks before it started and we'd already got uh, expressions of interest of over £200,000 for there, so we were reasonably hopeful. Uh, and after a few days um, and going up into the sort of mid-January onwards, we actually got ahead of our target uh, virtually all the way through uh, to the end. Uh, and we had also had an indication it might be possible to get hold of a uh, uh, £100,000 grant from the booster fund, which is basically uh, lottery funding money, um, and we hoped that we might get that as well, and in fact we did. So um, we ended up, in terms of applications, getting £872,000 uh, versus our target of 700000 so obviously 172000 over, which is fantastic. Uh, so thank you all for a uh, great commitment to the project. Uh, our share administration partners commented it had been one of the most successful raises they'd been involved with. Uh, and as we'd passed that minimum amount in January, we had invited several civil contractors to quote, um, but their quotes did not come in until after the share offer had closed at the end of February. So after the share raise has finished, uh, we've been concentrating on working with our consultants to refine the details on the civils and the costings. Uh, we've been looking at all the various different planning variations. Uh, we've had all of the uh, planning and license uh, permissions in place, uh, but we, as we've got to the final design, we just needed to make some changes there. We had to look at uh, the silt and soil quality uh, of what is likely to be extracted from uh, the river. Um, this is important because if the uh, uh, materials are not contaminated it's possible to spread those very cheaply locally whereas if they are contaminated we have to um, pay uh, money to get them uh, dealt with uh, properly via a waste uh, processor. Uh, and finally working on the power purchase agreement with Thames Lido, uh, just to mention a little on that there, Thames Lido who are relatively close to um, the weir uh, use almost exactly the amount of the output uh, that the uh, power plant will produce. Um, but the power plant only produces um, something like 70% of the year because there are times when the river flow is too low or too high when the plant cannot be used. Uh, so we will be providing uh, nearly all of the output uh, into Thames Lido but they will still be buying some of their output to uh, make sure that they've got their needs covered for the whole time. But it's been a great vote of confidence from them to show such enthusiasm for the project uh, right away from the start of the uh, detailed negotiations on that there. So 
we've already made clear in some of the mail shots to you that there have been some challenges to the budget and basically a few cut items may cost uh, a bit less but they're likely to be outweighed by some of the larger items that are going to cost more. We're sorry to say that in short it is very likely to cost more than we thought it would do. The biggest single issue is the construction civils where initial quotes have come in significantly higher than we were anticipating. The reason is that you have to commission quite detailed designs in order to get accurate quotes and different contractors have different ways of dealing with issues such as access, temporary diversion of the river and so on. Thus over the past few months we've been spending time working with our consultants on value engineering each one of the quotes to bring the cost down. So some of the examples we've looked at here are the preliminary work, uh, the uh, civils connected with the turbine access, uh, how the structure of the water intakes is done, and the fish pass where basically we are suggesting now that uh, as this is basically non-technical labour, this could almost be done by a volunteer force, uh, greatly reducing the cost of doing that. But I'm afraid it's, there's no getting away from the fact that the total cost of the project is going to be more than we had hoped for. As you're all aware of further challenges cropped up, we've always said that the best time to uh, build a project is during the summer months when the river tends to be at its lowest level and the idea was to build it in late summer 2020. But due to the coronavirus lockdown there is a risk to this uh, as the project is not deemed as an essential project. A three month lockdown would take us to the end of June and we might still be able to build it but a six month lockdown would take us into September and therefore we'd have to delay the build uh, and move it into 2021. Uh, that is still within the time frame for securing the feed-in tariff, one of our most important income streams but in case of any further delays we're contacting all the relevant permitting bodies to test for the possibility of extensions. Given the impact across the board, however, we're pretty confident that extensions would be granted, at least for the duration of the lockdown. So how much more is it going to cost and what is the impact? Uh, as far as the cost is concerned, we've basically got three versions that we're working on that we'd like to share with you today. First of all, in the first column, we have the original budget of 700000 Secondly, we have what we would describe as a lower band of estimates, which comes to a total of 857,000, and what we consider to be an upper band of estimates at a total of 950,000. I won't go through every line, but the key movers are um, the civils cost, which you can see goes from 250,000 right up to 440,000 in the worst case. Uh, the contingency, which is basically a calculation based on the uh, top two lines of the, uh, if you like, the parts and the construction as well, uh, and it's basically a percentage. Uh, and what we've done here is we've actually increased the percentage of that contingency uh, as we've gone uh, through the various scenarios. Uh, and finally, the um, project management costs, um, because we need, if we're going to keep a very tight lid on the expenditure and try and reduce the civils, we need more help from our um, uh, project management uh, experts as well. So what effect will this have on the uh, three financial determinants of the project, which is basically the interests rates paid to uh, applicants, shareholders, uh, the capital repayments made to them and the size of the community benefit. So this is the amount that we will give back to the community in terms of grants and awards. Um, what is probably easiest to uh, do is to compare the uh, combined impact of the interest rate payments and the capital repayments on the first 10 years of investment. So under the original budget the cost was going to be 700,000, we pay out 448,000 in interest payments basically at 4% every year from year 2 onwards and for that um, £1,000 investment uh, an investor would have received uh, £630 back within the first 10 years. Also worth noting that the community benefit was really quite large at 758000 over the 40 years of the investment. If we now move to the lower band, we can see that the capital cost has gone up, so we need to raise more money. Uh, the community benefit is quite a lot lower. It's probably just about half. Uh, and the interest payments are higher 
but more because of the extra size of the capital amount rather than the interest rates paid, which as you can see have to um, fall during the first five years from 4% to 3%, but then revert to 4% uh, thereafter. And the same calculation on what you get back for that £1,000 invested over the 10 years goes from £630 down to 590 so only a 40% fall. And if we look at the upper band, well, you'll see that the capital raise goes up again to 950000 The community benefit falls again um, to 228000 um, our interest uh, payments go down slightly, and this is because we cut the interest rates uh, compared to the original budget during the first 10 years. So it's starting at 2%, then going up to 3 years, but the three, sorry, 3%, three and that 3% will go on until um, the end of the first 10 years before it reverts to the original 4%. But overall, the um, payment uh, that an investor would receive, uh, even at this worst case, would go down to £529 versus £630. And all of these numbers have been worked out into what we would describe as a viable position. So in order to make the project viable, all we can afford in the lower band case is to pay a community benefit of £347,000 and a interest rate of 3%. Uh, in years 2 to 5 rather than 4% before it reverts to 4% again. A lot of numbers there, uh, I uh, appreciate that. What we would also mention is that when the uh, uh, original budget was offered, the uh, base rates were 0.75%, uh, currently um, partly due to the coronavirus. Uh, it base interest rates are now 0.1%. Uh, so what we're here seeing is probably a bigger premium over uh, base rates than um, we were originally envisaging. But we don't uh, think that those base rates will stay at that level forever, and certainly not for the length of the project. So what that means is that once we've um, confirmed the final budget, uh, then what we will restate is the business plan, which uh, explained all of the financials of the uh, project, uh, the share offer document, which explains what uh, the um, applicants would get for that in terms of their interest rates and repayment schedules, and then you can decide what to do. You can either um, continue with your application in terms of the value that you've applied for as you did originally. You can increase your application up to the new limit of 10% of total. So this was previously 70,000 as 10% of 700,000. So it's going to be more than that and therefore the application will be lifted as well. You can cancel your application and get a full refund of the amount that you've already paid in. Uh, what we would probably um, uh, and, and sorry, and finally, you could withdraw your application now, even before the final figures are available. But we would ask that people considered, consider hanging on until the final figures are available before they make a decision, because uh, in advance of those final figures, we're not really sure that we can say that there's a definite offer there um, without those numbers being available. I guess the final thing to say on that subject, of course, is that... Um, the burning question is, what is the final number and when will we know? Um, under normal circumstances, we would have expected this within a couple of weeks of the AGM, but because of the delayed response we're getting from some of the uh, bodies that we need to talk to, um, we are probably expecting to get those uh, numbers at the end of April and therefore be able to um, reconfirm the new numbers in the beginning of May and then people can go through the choices as um, we've outlined. So if we sum up now and go to what our uh, view uh, of the project is at the moment, um, to say we're dis disappointed to have to report the likely increasing costs is a polite way of putting it. It was certainly not our intention to uh, estimate a lower amount to gain, gain investment and we apologise for the likely increase in the impact on returns for investors and the community benefit. Although hopefully you'll agree that the impact on returns for investors is actually quite small if you look, at it, uh, look upon it over a 10 year period. So we will continue our best to deliver the project at as low a cost as possible. We will continue to be open in our information provision and continue to appreciate the support that we've had for this project so far. 
We think the project will still meet its three objectives. It will provide uh, the same quantity of renewable energy for Reading in line with the town's vision, and of course that is um, a zero carbon uh, energy. It will provide a community benefit uh, instead of producing product uh, profits, and it will provide a reasonable return for uh, our shareholders on their investment. So we hope you will all continue to support this project as we work tirelessly to try and deliver the best outcome for the environment, our community and our shareholders. If you do have any questions then obviously send them in to us um, via email and we'll uh, endeavour to come back to you as soon as we can if there's any points of clarification. But thanks again for all the commitment so far and we uh, will be working hard to deliver this project as we always intended to. Thank you.